وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of Fundamentals of Faith We've traveled far and wide in our journey in search of Tawheed and its precise meanings and implications in our life and we've discussed in great detail Tawheed of Allah's Lordship and Tawheed of Allah's right to be worshipped. Before we finish up this series, we need to talk about the third aspect of Tawheed, and that is Tawheed in Allah's names and attributes. Stay tuned for today's show. Today's topic is about Tawheed in Allah's names and attributes. Now we've discussed in our previous episodes in quite some detail the Tawheed of Allah's Lordship and the Tawheed of Allah's right to be worshipped and we also discussed factors that go against this type of Tawheed. In order to provide a complete picture about Tawheed we have one aspect of Tawheed remaining and that is Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. So our topic for today will be the importance of this topic. Why is it so important to study? The, the, the categorization, this third categorization of Tawheed, Tawheed and Allah's names and attributes. Well, firstly, the first reason why this topic is so important is that in some perspectives it is half of Tawheed and not just one third of Tawheed. How is that? This is because Tawheed of Allah's Lordship is also Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. Because we define Allah's Lordship to be that Allah is the true owner, the true king. The one who needs to be obeyed, and these are names and attributes of Allah. Also, we can understand Tawheed to be of two categories, if you like. The first category is Tawheed with regards to Allah, who Allah is, who is Allah. And the second category is Tawheed with regards to us, what do we do once we know who Allah is, i.e. we worship Him alone. So, we've said throughout these series that Tawheed is of three categories. We can also divide it. There's no contradiction if you divide it into two categories as well. And you combine Tawheed of Lordship with Tawheed of Names and Attributes. And you say, well, this is Tawheed of who Allah is. Tawheed of Knowledge. Knowing who Allah is. His names, His attributes, His Lordship, His powers, His, his right to be worshipped. All of this is Tawheed of Knowledge. Who is Allah? The second or the next half of Tawheed is what do we do with that knowledge? Now, do we, now that we know who Allah is, what do we do based with that knowledge? That is that we worship Him alone. So we can say that this category of Tawheed, names and attributes, is in reality half of Tawheed. Another aspect which shows the importance of this Tawheed is that the nobility of a science is dependent upon the nobility of the subject of that science. Therefore, Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes is the most noble science, the most dignified science to study. What do I mean by this? Well, we all know that in every society, the doctor is held in higher estimation than, for example, an engineer or an accountant. Why? Because the subject of study for the doctor is the human body, whereas the subject of study for the engineer is the chemicals or uh, the uh, construction materials around you, and the accountant is numbers. So because the subject of the doctor is the human body, which is more noble than these other matters. Therefore, the doctor is held in higher esteem. So what I'm trying to say is the nobility of a science is proportional, is dependent on the nobility of the subject that is being studied. And there is nothing that is more magnificent, more majestic than Allah Himself, Azza wa Jal. Therefore, the study of who He is, is obviously the most noble of all sciences. There can be nothing that is more dignified to study that is more noble to study in and of itself than who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is because of the status of Allah. 
because he is our Lord and our Rabb, there is nothing as noble, as magnificent, as glorious as he is. So to study him in and of itself is a noble science. Yet another aspect which shows the importance of this knowledge, knowledge of Allah's names and attributes, is that in reality this is one of the purposes that Allah created us. One of the purposes that Allah created us is to worship him, or in fact the main purpose that Allah created us is to worship him, and that worship cannot be based except upon a knowledge of who Allah is. In other words, how will you worship Allah if you don't know who He is? Therefore, it can be stated that one of the reasons that we are in existence, that we have been created, is to know Allah. In fact, Allah clearly says this in the Quran, Surah Talaq, verse 12. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah is the one who has created the seven heavens and the seven earths. He has created the entire creation until Allah says, so that you may know. That Allah is capable of all things and that Allah is aware of all things. Why did He create the heavens and the earth? So that you may know who Allah is. That He is the all-powerful, the all-knowledgeable, the one who knows everything. So one of the purposes of creation, according to this verse, is so that we may know who Allah is. We may study the tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. Yet another aspect which shows the importance of this science is that in many places in the Quran, Allah has commanded us to know His names and attributes. For example, in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 98, Allah says, I'lamu, know that Allah is severe in punishment and merciful in forgiveness. In Surah Baqarah verse 209, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Know that Allah is all-powerful and all-glorious, all-magnificent. I'lamu, know it, realize it, believe in it. In yet another verse, Surah Baqarah verse 231, Allah says, bi kulli shayin alim." And know for certain that Allah is aware of all things. So the command to learn the names and attributes of Allah has occurred in many verses in the Quran. Once again showing you the importance of the science. Yet another aspect which proves the importance of studying the science is that in reality this knowledge is the life of the heart. This is the food of the soul. As Allah says in Surah Al-Shura verse 52, is that this is how we have inspired you, O Muhammad, with a spirit proceeding from us. A spirit, a life. In other words, the one who doesn't have this knowledge, and we said this in a previous episode, the one who does not have a knowledge of who Allah is and what we have to do with regards to Allah, how we must worship Him, in reality He is spiritually dead. So Allah reminds the Prophet wasallam that this is how we have inspired you with a, with a spirit from us. You did not know what the book was, nor what was Iman, what was faith, until we gave you a light, so that you can guide people with it. And we went back to, in a previous episode, Tafsir al-Tabari, and we said, and we proved that in reality, this verse is a reference to Tawheed, a knowledge of Tawheed. So Allah calls this knowledge, a life of the heart, a spirit of the heart. So a knowledge of who Allah is, and studying Allah's names and attributes, this is food for our soul. Our spiritual iman, our spiritual faith will grow. It is nourished by recognizing and by knowing the names and attributes of Allah. In yet another verse, in Surah An'am verse 122, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of the one who was dead and we brought him back to life. We also quoted this verse before. And we said that the meaning of this verse is the one who was not a Muslim, he didn't know who Allah was. He was ignorant about Allah and the rights of Allah. Then Allah brought him back to life by giving him a knowledge of who Allah is. And obviously who Allah is, is the names and attributes of Allah. And what to do with that knowledge, which is to worship Him alone. So the point is that a knowledge of Allah's names and attributes is the main food for the soul. Spiritual food. Just like our physical body needs food, we need to eat and drink to survive. If we wish our soul if we wish our spirit to survive eternally in paradise, inshallah, then we have to feed it. We have to nourish it. And the primary nourishment is a knowledge of Allah. Who is Allah? And then based upon that knowledge, we act and we worship Allah alone. Yet another benefit of this science, yet another blessing of this science, and another point to prove its importance, is that Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us in the Qur'an to call him using his beautiful names. Allah says in Surah A'raf, verse 180, To Allah belongs the most beautiful names. So, make dua to Allah using these names. Use these names to make dua to Allah. Pray to Allah. 
if we want to be forgiven, we say, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Tawab, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, O ever forgiving, O merciful, O beneficent. If we want sustenance, we say, Ya Razzaq, the one who gives sustenance. Ya Ghani, the one who is not in need of anything and he is the one who gives. So whatever we need, we can always find a name and attribute which is suitable to our dua. And Allah commands us in the Quran that when we make dua, we should use the names and attributes of Allah. And that is why we find that most of the du'as of the Qur'an, they in fact begin with Rabb, Rabbana, my Rabb. Because Rabb is one of the most comprehensive names of Allah. It includes in it the fact that Allah created me, Allah sustains me, Allah nourishes me, Allah provides for me. Remember one of the meanings of Rabb was that He is the one who nourishes and sustains. So when you have your needs, you must pray to Allah, O oh Rabb, the one who nourishes and sustains me, give me what I need. And we find that most of the du'as of the Qur'an, therefore, they start with the phrase, Rabb, our Lord. So, we find this, so this is yet another benefit and blessing that Allah has commanded us in the Qur'an to make du'a, to pray to Allah using His names. And if we don't know His name, if we don't know His attributes, then how will we make du'a to Allah using His names and attributes? Yet another benefit and blessing of this science is that Every single name of Allah and every single attribute, it inculcates, it produces in our heart a special type of love. It increases our iman, our faith in Allah. Every single name and attribute. So when we know that He is the Rahman, the ever merciful, always showering His mercy on all of the creation, automatically we will feel more love for Allah. We will want to turn to Him for our needs. When we know that Allah is as samir the one who hears everything, and that no one else is as samir then we will realize the foolishness of calling out to other than Allah. They will not even be able to hear you as Allah says. When we realize that Allah is al that ala kulli shayin qadir, capable of all things, okay, and that He is the muqtadid, the one who is capable of doing whatever He wills, then we also see that when we have any need, we should only turn to Allah. Only Allah can grant us our need. There is no point in turning to a helpless object. So the point is that every single name and attribute of Allah will produce in our hearts. Once we understand it, not just we memorize it, not just we read it, no. Once we ponder over it, we understand it, we let our heart, we let this name absorb into our heart, sink into our heart, ponder over it, then without a doubt, it will increase our faith in Allah. It will increase our love in Allah. And therefore the scholars state that one of the primary ways to increase our Iman, you know that Iman, it increases and decreases. Sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up. Sometimes we feel, quote unquote, better Muslims. And sometimes we do acts that we could never have imagined that we would do them. Acts of sin. And then we turn back to Allah and we become better Muslims. So Iman goes up and down. And we were, we're going to talk about this in a future episode, inshallah. But the point I'm trying to stress here is that the scholars state that the primary way to increase your Iman is to study Allah's names and attributes. We'll take a short break now and we'll come back and prove this point in greater detail. Stay tuned with us. Fascinating, fascinating. Every time you come, I'm just uh, fascinated by what you bring and the, the images you bring and, and the, the way you describe the eye. It's an amazing, uh, amazing tool that we have been given. It is. Yeah. Um, the first few months, first two to three months, is an extreme, uh, are extremely important uh, to have to develop the binocular vision. Welcome back. Uh, we were discussing the fact that every single name and attribute of Allah produces a love, produces a, a, an increase in faith. And that this is the primary way to increase our faith, our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's go back to the books. Let's go back to our sources. And remember over and over again, in this episode, 
And in all our episodes, we go back to the Quran and Sunnah. We'll take you back to the sources of Islam. These books that are behind me are not meant for props or decoration. No. We go back to them, we open them up, and we seek guidance from them. Because they are the Quran and the Sunnah. They are our guidance and source for life. So let's go look up one narration which proves to us the effects that the names and attributes of Allah has on the Muslim. We turn to Sunan Ibn Majah, hadith number 181. And we find a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that your Lord laughs at the one who is in despair. In other words, he is in despair of receiving any good from Allah. He is making dua to Allah. He is praying to Allah for some type of need of his. And his dua has not yet been responded to. So he feels depressed, right? So your Lord laughs at this person knowing that his situation will be changed very soon. But he doesn't know that. So Allah is laughing that the servant feels so much despair. Yet the mercy of Allah will come immediately. You understand the hadith? The hadith states that Allah laughs at the servant who he's making dua, he's making dua and in his heart he thinks, okay, Allah will not respond to me now. He's given up hope. Yet Allah knows that he will respond to him immediately. Maybe after a little while. So Allah is amused at the despair of the servant even though, even though as they say, the light is right at the end of the tunnel or the, the, the mercy of Allah will just come. So the Prophet ﷺ said this hadith. The companion that heard it, his name was Abu Rizin. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, does our Lord laugh? Does our Lord laugh? He's asking. Because this is an attribute of Allah. Remember we said every name and attribute increases the Iman. So the Sahaba, when he heard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs, he asks, he asks the Prophet sallallahu does our Lord laugh, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet sallallahu said, yes. Naam. So the companion answered, and this is the point. If that is the case, then I will never give up hope from receiving good from a Lord that laughs. If my Lord laughs, then I will never give up hope of receiving good from Him. So immediately, look at the effect of this attribute in his heart. As soon as he heard that our Lord laughs, in a way that Allah knows best, we don't ask how, and we're going to talk about this in our next episode. But he heard that Allah laughs. Immediately his iman went up. And he said, if that is the case, then I will always expect good. I will always be optimistic about receiving the mercy of Allah. And this hadith clearly shows you that every single name and attribute of Allah produces a certain love, an increase in iman. And this is one of the blessings of studying the science of tawheed of the names and attributes of Allah. Yet another blessing of studying this science, we turn to Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 7374. And we state that another blessing of this science of the hate of Allah's names and attributes is that whoever loves the names and attributes of Allah will enter paradise. What is the proof for this? We turn to the hadith, this hadith that we mentioned. And it is narrated that a man during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ would always recite, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ Every single rak'ah in his prayer, he would recite this surah. And maybe another surah as well, but he would always recite this surah. He would never give up reciting this surah. So, when uh, the people heard this, they said, why, why is he doing this? Why is he always reciting surah al-ikhlas in the, every single rak'ah? So the Prophet ﷺ asked him, why do you do so? He sa so he said that I do so because it describes my Lord. And I love to hear his descriptions. This entire surah is about the names and attributes of Allah. And because of this, it is equivalent to a third of the Quran as we know. As we know, the Prophet ﷺ said that this surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas, is equivalent to one third of the Quran. Why? Because it describes Allah It's only three or four, four verses. But because its subject is so grand, the names and attributes of Allah. Because it discusses who our Creator is then this one small surah is equivalent in its blessings, in its message, to one-third of the entire Qur'an. So, when the Prophet ﷺ asked him, why does he do so? He replied, because it describes my Lord, and I love to read about his description. So the Prophet ﷺ said, inform him that his love for this surah has made Allah love him. 
So having a love of Allah's names and attributes allows us to achieve the love of Allah. Having a love of Allah's names and attributes makes us amongst those who have a greater chance of going to paradise. Just like this man here. He would all recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. And it's something very small, only three or four verses. Four verses. But why did he used to recite it? Because he said it describes my Lord and I love to read about his descriptions. I love to read the names and attributes. So the Prophet ﷺ said, in another narration he said, his love for this surah has caused him to enter paradise. His love for this surah has caused him to enter paradise. And this is why we find that, for example, Ayat al-Kursi, or the verse of the throne, this is the greatest verse in the Qur'an. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the most blessed. What is it about? It is about nothing except the names and attributes of Allah. The power of Allah. The knowledge of Allah. The entire verse is about who Allah is. So this verse is the greatest verse in the Qur'an. And Surah Al-Ikhlas, which also describes Allah, is also one of the greatest surahs of the Qur'an. One third of the Qur'an equivalent to it. Why? Because of the importance of the subject matter. This is yet another blessing of Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. Yet another blessing, we turn to another hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Hadith number 7392. And we state that of the blessings of, tawheed, of this Tawheed, this category of Tawheed, is that whoever studies it and whoever memorizes the names of Allah will enter paradise. The Prophet ﷺ said that to Allah belongs 99 names. To Allah belongs 99 names. 100 except for one. It's an emphasis. He said 99, then he said 100 minus 1, which is 99. Whoever memorizes these 99 names will enter paradise. Now what is the meaning of memorizing here? As the scholars state, it means not just verbally memorizing them. Obviously, verbally memorizing them, understanding them, believing in them, worshipping Allah through them, and making dua through them as well. So when a person puts all of these names in his heart, he absorbs these 99 names of Allah. He allows his body and soul to digest these names and starts acting upon them. Then the Prophet ﷺ said that this person will enter paradise. Yet another blessing of studying the names and attributes of Allah is that this, is, this subject is one of the primary ways of appreciating our purpose in life and of experiencing self-contentment and happiness. When we know who Allah Azza wa Jal is, when we understand the power of Allah, the majesty of Allah, when we study and appreciate the names and attributes of Allah, then and only then will we realize our insignificance. Will we turn to Allah for every need? Will we realize that our whole purpose in life, our sole purpose, we have no other reason to exist except to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And this comes about as a result of knowing who Allah is. So, a knowledge of Tawheed, of Allah's names and attributes, allows us to know ourselves, to know our proper state and our proper level in life. As Allah says in Surah Al Ra'd, verse 28, that those who believe and whose hearts achieve peace by the remembrance of Allah, verily, the hearts only achieve peace through the remembrance of Allah. The hearts will not achieve peace except through the remembrance of Allah. If you want to live a good life in this world, if you want to live a good life in the hereafter, the only way to achieve it is through Allah and through a knowledge of Allah and through a worship of Allah. This is the only way to achieve happiness in this world, in this life and in the hereafter. In another verse in Surah Al-Hashr, verse 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And don't be like those who forgot Allah, so they forgot themselves. This is a beautiful verse, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't be like those who forgot Allah and they forgot themselves. He who forgets his creator, forgets his purpose in life and he forgets himself. The primary way to understand, the primary way to realize our purpose in life is to study who Allah is. When we study the names and attributes of Allah, we realize why we are here. We realize that the greatest thing for us to do is to worship this Allah. To worship this Allah who is so all-powerful, all almighty, who has so many beautiful names and attributes. The tawheed of Allah's names and attributes is a fundamental building block of our iman, of our faith. Without it, we will not have a proper idea, a proper understanding of who Allah is, if we don't know who Allah is, how will we worship Him properly? 
Therefore, it is essential that every Muslim have a basic knowledge of this Tawheed as well. Who is Allah? What are His names and attributes? How can I worship Him better? How can I increase my faith in Him? It is a basis for all other sciences. A knowledge of this science is a basis for all other sciences. Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf verse 58 that Ala lahu al wal amr. To Him belongs the creation and to Him belongs the command. Everything in existence either goes back to the creation of Allah or to the words and the commandments of Allah. So everything in creation goes back to the names and attributes of Allah. As Allah says in this verse, that to Him belongs the creation and the command. The command is His speech. His speech is uncreated. In the Quran, for example, it is not created. Everything else besides Allah and His names and attributes is created. So Allah says everything goes back either to His creation or to His speech, to His command. Therefore, all the sciences go back. All the sciences return to the Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. So the Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes and a knowledge of this Tawheed is the fundamental science on which all other sciences are based. The last reason that we should study this science is a very simple one. And that is that throughout the centuries many different groups have evolved, many different sects, many different deviations have come with regards to the proper understanding of this very important topic, the topic of Allah's names and attributes. Therefore, it becomes imperative upon us to go back to the sources and see what is the truth in this regard. How should we understand these names and attributes? What should we do with them? Because there's so much confusion, so much ikhtilaf, differences. What is the correct opinion? Well, the correct opinion will be our topic for next session. How do we understand these names and attributes of Allah? We'll go back to the sources and we'll see what they have to say about this. Until next time, we hope to see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.